What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the gradient texture node in order to create textures that transition from one color to another inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna start off with a simple sphere like this one. And we're gonna go into the shader editor on the right hand side of the page. We're gonna add a material just like this. So we've got a simple principled BSDF shader in here. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna start by adding a gradient texture node. So if we add a gradient texture node, what that's gonna do is that's gonna add a node in here that basically tells this object to transition between one color and the other. And you can kind of see it on this object right here. It's very subtle where now um, this starts on the back side dark and it transitions all the way to light over here on the right hand side of the page. However, it's not a very pronounced effect. And so we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by adding a color ramp node in order to make the effect more pronounced. So we're just gonna do a shift A. We're gonna add a color ramp right here. So now if you take this and you drag these values together like this, notice what this is doing is now you've got more dark on this side and more light on this side. And so if you click and drag these together, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to give you a basically a transition between this color and this color right here. So we're basically able to dictate the colors that are being used in the gradient texture, as well as the start and finish and the strength of the transition between these two. So let's say for example, that we wanted to transition between a couple different colors. So what we could do is we could use our color ramp node and we could click on this point right here and pick a color. So in this case, we're gonna pick blue right here. Now, if I scroll around, notice what this is doing is this is transitioning from the black to the blue like this. So let's say we were to change this to a, you know, let's actually make it like a yellow or something like that. Well, now you can see how it's transitioning between the yellow and the blue right here. And we can drag these together in order to get a pronounced effect like this, we could also add additional colors in here. So if we were to click the plus button again, and let's say we wanted to add a red in here now. Well, notice what you're doing is you're getting this transition between your yellow, your red, and your blue right here. And so remember that we can adjust the way that this transitions by using this drop down here. So if I change this to ease, notice how I'm getting more of a fuzzy boundary between these colors. So you could use this to add as many colors as you wanted to in here. So for example, I could add like a green color, something like that. But notice how what this is doing is this is basically transitioning these between, it's basically creating kind of a fuzzy transition between these different materials right here. And so one thing to note about this, let's go ahead and let's jump over to this monkey right here and let's add a new material. I will do the same thing. So we'll do a shift A and we'll add a gradient texture. We'll add a color ramp like this. Well, one thing to note about this, and I'm gonna drag these in just a bit so that we get a little bit more of a pronounced look. But one thing to note about this is notice that there's different drop downs for different kinds of gradients. So if you bring this down, for example, and you select something like the quadratic, notice how the way that it calculates the gradient is gonna be different than if you pick the linear. So you can set this so that you've got more easing between the different ones. So you can kind of play around with these in order to see which one gets you the best result for what you're trying to do. So the spherical and the radial are a little bit interesting. They just map these in here a little bit different. Um, we're gonna go ahead and leave it with the easing for right now. But one thing I want to be able to do is I want to be able to control um, what direction this is creating the gradient texture, right? Because right now it's just kind of throwing it in here on the left hand side and just moving it across. Well, what if you wanted to set this up so the gradient went from the bottom to the top? Well, what you could do is you could add a mapping node to this. And I have Node Wrangler enabled, so it's really easy for me to do this. I can just select this texture right here and do a Control T, and that's going to automatically set up my mapping for my object. And so now what that's gonna do is that's gonna make it so I can actually rotate the effect like this. So I could rotate this 90 degrees. Well, notice how now my gradient effect is occurring between the bottom and the top instead of the other way around. And so you can set if this goes from bottom to top instead of from left to right. So you can use this in order to more quickly dictate the way that uh, this is being created in here. And so this gets a little bit more interesting 
if we start combining our nodes together. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this material to the sphere. And so what this starts getting interesting is now you can take this gradient texture and you can combine it with other things inside your model. So for example, let's say that I was to add a noise texture node in here, and then we'll do a shift A and we're gonna add a mix RGB right here. And I'm just gonna plug these two values in here like this. Well now what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to basically apply this noise texture at the gradient location. And let's go ahead and switch this over to constant in my color ramp just so you can see it a little bit better. So that's basically going to set this up where the blacks are straight black and the white are straight white. But we're going to go ahead and bring this down like this. Well notice what that does is that's now combining these two things together. And so that's giving me a really interesting noise along the edge right here. And you can adjust this with some additional detail if you wanted to. You could adjust your roughness, but basically what that allows me to do is that allows me to set kind of an edge in here um, where almost like this was painted or something like that on the bottom of the sphere. And so from there, what we can do is I'm gonna add another color ramp node just cause it'll give me a little bit more control over the result. But I'm just gonna drag this mix shader in here and I'm gonna drag the color into my roughness. We'll say it's roughness for right now. And what we're gonna be able to do with that is that means that this object is going to be shiny in the dark locations, but not shiny on the top. So notice how we're able to dictate that an object is shiny on the bottom, but not up here, which allows us to do some interesting things like, uh, like let's say we wanted to do something where the paint was scraped off or something like that. This gives us control over the ability to do that. And so once we do this, we can also kind of control where this is located and the look by adjusting our mix shader, right? So notice how if I drag my mix shader almost all the way to the right, I'm getting more of the noise texture. If I drag it to the left and this is a little bit more, uh, so this is a little bit more um, kind of limited to the middle of this object right here. But we can use this in order to really quickly set up objects like this where they have more paint in one location and not in another location. There's a lot of interesting things that we can do with this. So there's a ton of different things you can do with this, but let's say, for example, that you had some kind of a, uh, we'll call this a terrain really quick. And let's say we wanted to mix two textures together. Well, you can use the gradient texture node in order to do that. So if I was to add a gradient texture right here, and then add a color ramp, just so we can see what we're doing, we can drag the color into our factor and the color into our base color right here. So you can see that this is currently giving us a gradient across our surface, but we want this to be up and down. So we can give a different texture to the higher versus the lower location. So I'm just gonna do a control T to do our mapping, and we'll just rotate this 90 degrees on the Y axis like this. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you this gradient texture in here that's going to transition between these two points. Well, in this case, instead of using our gradient texture, as the color that goes into our principal BSDF, we're gonna use it as the map or the factor in which we can combine two different materials. So let's say that we were to add an image texture node in here like this, and we're gonna add two of these, and we're gonna add a mix RGB node right here. Well, if you take this and combine them together into our two factors, right, at the moment, that's just gonna give you a 50-50 um, with nothing really in here. And we'll combine kind of a green ground material with maybe a rocky material. And so notice right now, right, what we can do is we can drag the factor back and forth to give us one or the other. Well, what we wanna do instead is we wanna take this gradient texture and we wanna drag it in here like this. We're gonna use the gradient texture as our factor. And so notice what we're getting in here is we're getting now a combination of our rocky material and our ground material right here. And you can adjust the strength of this by adjusting your sliders. So notice how if I move that to the left and I drag this to the left, then this is going lower on our ground right here. So we can use this to kind of combine these textures together. And if we wanted to add just a little bit more of this rocky material kind of coming down here a little bit. And so what we might do is we might add a noise texture and then add a mix RGB like this. What that would allow us to do is that would allow us to combine um, the noise texture along with this like this, notice if I drag this to the right, um, I'm getting a little bit of noise in here. You probably are gonna wanna drag your vector into your noise texture as well. So once you do that though, when this compiles your shaders, notice how now we're getting a little bit more um, of the rock kind of blended in here in kind of random locations. And you can adjust where that occurs, like the scale 
of that effect in here. You could even, if you wanted to, add another color ramp in order to um, better control what's going on in there. So you could add an, another color ramp node in there as well um, in order to control the strength of that transition. And so then if you wanted to control like the up and down, you could go back and you could adjust the scale in your mapping right here. So notice how when I scale this down, um, I'm getting more of that transition up high. If I scale it up, then I'm getting a little bit more of a pronounced edge in here. So you can kind of adjust those different settings until you get a result that you like inside of Blender. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything that we talked about, or let me know what you're using the gradient texture node for. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.